Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Abir, and I work at a farm called uh, Everdale from uh, Hillsburg, Ontario. How many people here have been to Ontario or Canada? And you can't answer if you're from Canada. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, so uh, I work for a program called the Bout of Family Initiative on Canadian Seed Security. It is a program that's funded by the Weston Foundation and uh, administered by USC Canada and Seeds of Diversity Canada. Um, a lot of the folks here might have heard a bit about it over the course of the weekend. Um, uh, to the short of it is, is that we are uh, a national program uh, from BC to Atlantic Canada and everywhere in between uh, that helps support Canadian seed producers in scaling up uh, regionally adapted seed that's suitable for ecological production in uh, across the country. And uh, we do that in lots of different ways, uh, but the focus is primarily on collaborating with farmers and seed growers, understanding what their needs are, and doing our best to design different programs to support them in, uh, in their endeavors. And uh, one of those endeavors is scaling up uh, vegetable seed production. And we run a number of different programs in, in order to do that. So I'm, I'm going to give uh, a, a brief overview of what some of those programs are that work on a national basis, and then focus in on one of the programs that we think might be most relevant uh, to the producers in the room in terms of um, how to scale up seed production for vegetable seed, but in particular for uh, market gardeners or seed growers that are interested in integrating seed production into their, into their operation. Um, so we offer um, you know, a suite of different uh, training services and knowledge development programs through webinars, field days, workshops, conferences, um, just to provide uh, as much high quality information to growers by bringing in expert growers from across the country and outside of, of Canada to provide some expertise that otherwise wouldn't be available to a lot of the seed growers and farmers that are, that are, in, that are in the country. Uh, we run a seed grow out program that involves uh, 80 farmers across the country that are trialing and developing uh, different types of open pollinated varieties that work on their farms and are in demand uh, by large scale market gardeners. Uh, that's the program that I'll go into more detail about. And then we offer grants uh, to um, small to mid-scale growers that are helping them scale up their operation. So that might be, you know, a small grant of around four thousand dollars to around four thousand dollars to buy more efficient seed cleaning equipment, uh, storage sh shed, different types of infrastructure to help scale up and make their process more efficient, um, as well as to trial new varieties and, um, you know, support the grower that is that has a, a goal in mind to, to scale up their vegetable seed production. And then we also run a peer exchange project, which is um, like a facilitation network where we are trying to listen to uh, growers across the country who are leading collaborative seed growing networks uh, with an emphasis on how these growers are finding different ways to support each other and help each other to scale up their operations. Um, and you can find out more about all those programs by talking to any of the awesome representatives from the Bowder program, uh, but for now I'm just going to talk about our seed grow outs. Um, one of the main uh, partners for this project is Seeds of Diversity, and uh, Seeds of Diversity runs, uh, uh, orchestrates a seed library that preserves uh, basically all of the Canadian uh, seed varieties that they can get their hands on for public access. And uh, a program that was running out of Seeds of Diversity Canada is um, a grow out program where they would take varieties that were in their seed bank and redistribute them out to, to growers, gardeners, farmers, have those farmers grow out fresh seeds and replenish the, the, the stocks of that seed library. Um, we use the same model to um, help certain farmers and seed producers scale up particular varieties of OPs that are in demand and, um, and suitable for for different types of um, seed production on, on different farms, uh, where we basically uh, have farmers select uh, open pollinated varieties that work on their farm and grow it out at a, at a scale that's suitable for commercial production. So I'm just going to walk through that process and how it works on a national level, and then drill down a little bit further in terms of a particular program that we're, that we're running in Ontario, which is a variation of this. Um, so essentially, farmers will select a, an open pollinated variety that they like on their farm. Um, to the, to, I guess, your left is a, a tomato called Baziki, which is a hybrid tomato uh, called Buffalo that a farmer named Corey Eichmann had stabilized into an OP that works as an excellent greenhouse tomato on his farm. Um, and to the right, it would be, I guess, a, a squash that a lot of the folks here in the Pacific Northwest would be 
familiar with, um, uh, Carol, Depp's, Carol Depp's uh, Sweet Meat Squash, or the full name of that is Sweet Meat Oregon Homestead, is that right? Yeah, okay. Um, so that was a squash that was sent in from a grower in, in BC, and the Baziki tomato is one that was adapted and selected in Ontario. So if this is, if these are varieties that the growers are that like and are in demand, um, what we'll do is we'll send out seed of those varieties or have growers um, you know, find a source of that seed on their own, and then they'll grow it out according to uh, commercial standards that we outline in uh, quality documents that we send out to growers. So I guess this is what differentiates it from a seed library project where, you know, uh, although there's quality standards associated with that, we really want growers to engage in attempting to grow out crops according to strict uh, population standards and isolation distances, um, which is, it sounds pretty basic and, and, and straightforward, but it is a new endeavor for a lot of the new and emerging seed growers that are in the country. And um, we don't want to intimidate them to, you know, grow out 200 uh, beet plants to, to maintain genetic variability for, for that population. But we also want to encourage them that if they're interested in, in, in growing seed at a large scale, that this is also what what would uh, what would be required of them? Um, so we ask them to adhere to those uh, standards, uh, record different types of agronomic and taxonomic information about those plants, uh, just getting them to observe and understand different qualities and characteristics about those plants, um, and then um, provide some guidance on how to rogue, select, and harvest uh, and clean the seed. Um, uh, that's Corey Eichmann, the guy who bred or uh, kind of adapted the Baziki tomato. And um, you know, doing some more seed cleaning, and throughout all of those processes throughout the uh, throughout the season, we'll offer a lot of training, field days, and extension to help both the um, emerging growers and existing farmers who have been growing seed for a long time to better develop their skills on roguing, on selection, on efficient seed cleaning processes, all in all in the efforts to kind of showcase this is how you could do it on a on a larger scale. Growers will fill out the data um, that in the forms that we send out, send it back to Seeds of Diversity Canada. We um, get all samples of the seed and the growers keep uh, the majority of the seed to replenish um, and grow out or redistribute as they choose. Um, we store it and redistribute it in our seed library um, for redistribution to, to, to other growers across the country who want to trial those varieties as well. Um, so. We started this in 2013, but I'm showing some data just from 2014 and 2015. Um, you can see it's a pretty uh, great way to include a lot of different growers from across the country. And it's an amazing way to test a lot of different varieties for their viability for seed production in Canada. Um, so this is the number of growers that are participating, and those are the varieties that are, um, that are being trialed. Uh, I guess I didn't put the data here on, on unique crops, but it's still, a, it's still a pretty wide sample of different uh, combinations of annuals and biennials that are coming through the program. So in Ontario, that's how it works on a national level. In Ontario, what we've decided to do is run this program with funding from Agriculture uh, and Agri-Food Canada and Growing Forward 2. Uh, it's called the Vegetable Seed Producers Network. And what we uh, basically did was we surveyed about 60 to 70 market gardeners in Ontario and asked them what open pollinated varieties they liked uh, to grow out on their farm at a large scale uh, as, a, as a market garden crop, but was not widely available from other types of seed companies that they would generally purchase from. Um, because we would hope that that would be a way to identify specific uh, local, specific varieties that would fit a market niche and a market gap. Um, and would be in demand from, from local farmers and, 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 and market gardeners. Um, so sometimes these varieties would be widely available, but they might run out quickly, or um, they were varieties that were being carried by local seed companies um, that would you know, require a bit more selection. It was like kind of like a not fully stable OP, but one that was really desirable for market gardeners so that they could do a bit of selection while they're growing out um, for seed. Uh, an example of that would be uh, Frank Morton's Jester Lettuce, which uh, an amazing farmer in Ontario uh, whose name is Kim Delaney, who runs Hawthorne Farm Organic Seeds, carries a, a line of this lettuce. And this was, you know, a really easy crop to send out to market gardeners, have them do selection, 
profit off of it as a market garden crop and still grow it for seed. Um, lipstick pepper, I mean, it's another widely available variety, but this was an OP that was in demand for market gardeners that wanted a good, solid, open pollinated pepper, so we could offer this seed as well. Uh, we had a grower um, at Whole Circle Farm, which is a farm in Acton, grow out fewer kugel beet of seed that they had saved for, for several years, and now we can offer this through the program. And this is a new variety that we're adopting for the program this year, which is Stella Blue Squash, which is a, a small Hubbard that um, that market gardeners were requesting. Kabocha. Sorry? Kabocha, sorry, Kabocha Squash, um, that market gardeners were requesting because a lot of the Kabochas that they were working with were hybrids or, or, or too big if they were OPs. Um, this is a list of all the farms that were participating in the program uh, last year. And I uh, just want to highlight two producers that were heavily involved in inspiring this kind of network, uh, Kim Delaney at Hawthorne Farm Organic Seeds and Corey Eichmann at Saugeen River CSA. Uh, this is what the program looked like in 2013, and this is what it looks like now in 2015. And what really excites me is the clusters of grower networks that have kind of popped up. You can see it in Kingston, in Wellington County, in Ottawa, and of course in Thunder Bay, uh, where there's some really amazing growers out there that are doing some excellent stuff. Um, and what this is, is that this is a, it's a network of skilled seed growers that are supporting each other in learning how to develop, how to scale up. And that's, that's more important than the seed that comes through this program. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's shown that you know, even after this initiative runs out, there's gonna be these growers that are you know, knowledgeable of how to grow seed at a larger scale and potentially can support each other in those efforts. Um, and we did a market study on vegetable seed uh, two, uh, two years ago or last year. Uh, where we were kind of identifying like what the actual value of ecological seed purchases were in Canada. And it was 28 million was the number that we sort of rested on. And, and, and that's a really small number when you think about uh, the amount of uh, growth and production that organic food production can, do, can fill in Canada. So there's, this is a growing market and we try to kind of offer this as an re economic rationale to market gardeners and seed producers who are looking to to get into it um, and, and would like another incentive. Um, this is what it looks like across the country. Um, and you can see that you know, it's a wide diversity of participants. And I'll just wrap up real quickly with some of the things that have worked about this program and some of the things that haven't. Um, and it's been a really successful way at engaging different producers at all types of scales and at all types of skill levels to attempt to grow out seed at a larger scale. And um, for some of the more skilled market gardeners and growers in that area, they can now be contract growers for local seed companies in that region who can now purchase good quality seed from those farmers instead of having to you know, um, import that seed or purchase it from somebody that's outside of their, their region. Um, there's more quantities of seeds and diversity of seeds that are in circulation because we're getting a lot more growers to trial out varieties and grow out varieties that they've never worked with before. And it's an excellent opportunity to build a network and offer a lot of training and knowledge development because it's from Thunder Bay to Pelee Island to Ottawa that we have growers involved and we can offer a diversity of training and support services for those farmers. Um, some of the challenges is that you know it's production focused seed. It's not focusing on building foundation and stock seed, which is something that we'd like to build later on into the network. And it's sort of like an expedited variety trial, if you will. I mean, I think if we um, had some you know, more time and more resources, we'd be able to do structured variety trials, identify those OPs and scale them up. Um, in this process, what we're doing is really trusting that the farmer is demanding a very high quality open pollinated variety. And we're gonna try to scale that up by, you know, responding to the market demand of what the, uh, what the farmer has asked for. Um, and, you know, uh, we're in the early stages of the program, so we're not fully clear as to whether the varieties that are being circulated are being adopted by market gardeners yet, but this is, you know, what we're trying to um, stimulate and, and, and build through a, through a program like this. Um, and I think that's, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is a seed grower in, in, in Ontario that started kind of growing seed for this program, and now she's contract growing for, uh, for a local seed company. So it's a small success story for you know, a program that's involving a lot of growers, and we're hoping to, to share more of these later on. Thanks.